mental strength is what we gain from the madness we survive. So I hope that this quote of the day will give you the inner strength to fight the madness surrounding you as well as to achieve your goals. On that note, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs, and I welcome you all in this series of morning tales, which will have questions that can be of very relevance for your upcoming examinations, like RJ Sebi Nabar, or in many other banking examinations. So let's begin this video. But if you are a newcomer here, then do not forget to subscribe to our channel and hit this bell notification. Also, you can join this Telegram group where we provide free courses as well as you can directly connect with your mentors here. This is the 2022 course, guys. Let me give you a brief introduction about this course. So this course has PDFs, video lessons, as well as mock tests. Apart from these three things, you will get assistance for your interviews as well. Okay. In addition to all those things, we will be sending you a book kit that includes the question bank for phase one and two, uh, revision to revision booklet for phase two, as well as past years for phase one and two, starting from the year 2010 onwards. Along with all these books, you will get a notebook and a pen as well. So right now we are running a thirty percent discount on this course. If you are willing to enroll in this course, then you can avail that discount by using the RPI thirty coupon code. And in case you have any queries, then then do feel free to ask us on the number right in front of you. Okay, so let's begin the video for today with this first question: Which I of the following IIT has launched Mission Bharat O two? So O two stands for oxygen. IIT Madras, IIT Delhi, Bombay, Kanpur, and Kharagpur are in the options. Out of these five options, the right answer is option B. That is IIT Kharagpur. So the startup incubation and innovation center, which is located in IIT Kanpur, has launched this Mission Bharat O2, which is basically a 45 days challenge under which oxygen generating units will be developed by the IIT Kanpur. So basically, it is to uh, combat the second wave of coronavirus pandemic that this mission has been launched, and that was the basic purpose of it as well. Now, guys, the other question that is springing up from this news is that in which IIT is the startup incubation and innovation center located? So this is this might be or another question, another type of question that can be uh, framed from this news only, and the answer there would be IIT Kanpur. So you should keep that in mind also. Apart from this, who is the director of IIT? It is Abhay Karandikar. Karandikar. So he is the director of IIT Kanpur. I hope that you can memorize this fact as well. Moving on to the second question: With which company has National Dairy Development Board signed an agreement to promote efficient renewable technologies in the dairy industry? So we have National Thermal Power Corporation. Uh, energy efficiency services limited northeastern electric power corporation national hydroelectric power corporation power grid corporation of india is the options out of these five options which one is the right answer the right answer is option b that is energy efficiency services limited now under this partnership this energy efficiency services limited will try to develop technologies and solutions that can help the dairy sector plants the dairy plants across india to have renewable energy so basically the basic purpose is to install renewable energy solutions in the dairy uh, cooperative plants across the country and for that this partnership has been developed between national dairy development board and energy efficiency services limited so the first thing that i'm going to talk about here apart from the news is about the national dairy development board so who is the chairperson of this board this is a very important question guys because this appointment took place last year only so who is the person it is varsha joshi remember that varsha joshi is the chairperson of national dairy development board next is energy efficiency services limited so this is guys one of the most important organizations at present in india why you will get to know this thing after you understand the background of this organization the first fact related to its background is that it was founded in 2009 and it is a joint venture of four public sector undertakings and which four undertakings are these first is ntpc limited second is power grid corporation of india third is power finance corporation limited and fourth is rec limited so these are the four electric companies four power companies that have collaborated to develop this joint venture called energy efficiency services limited and the present chairperson of this energy efficiency services limited is rajiv sharma so remember all these facts that i have told you here my question from you is that 
this energy efficiency services limited is implementing one of the flagship schemes of the central government that entails developing and distributing led bulbs so now can you name the scheme which scheme i am talking about which scheme is it that entails that has the provision to distribute led bulbs and encourage the production of led bulbs at a low cost in it you have to name that scheme in the comment section below and here the information related to this news ends now i am moving on to the third question which is equally important the third question is with which country has india signed an mou on migration and mobility partnership to facilitate legal movement of students and professionals and combating illegal migration and organized immigration crime so this is an important mou guys this can be asked in your examination so do listen to me very carefully you have thailand uk japan usa and australia in the options out of these five options the right answer is option b that is uk so with united kingdom this mou has been signed uh, remember that this mou was signed during the virtual meeting between the prime ministers of both these countries that is boris johnson as well as prime minister narendra modi apart from this during that virtual meeting only some days back both these prime ministers have decided to implement road map 2030 now what is this road map 2030 road map 2030 is basically a plan of action for both of these countries to strengthen their partnership in some of the very important areas so what are the focus areas of the road map 2030 this is the next thing that we are going to discuss so this intelligent scientist will tell us that what are the key focuses of road map 2030 so the first focus area here is enhanced trade partnership including comprehensive free trade agreement so under this road map 2030 both uk and india will try to achieve a uh, will try to sign basically a comprehensive free trade agreement so that they both can double their trade by the year 2030 so this is the next point of concern in the road map 2030 the third point here is to strengthen defense partnership focusing on maritime and industrial co collaboration and the fourth point is cooperation for a free and open indo pacific region so this road map 2030 has three more points that are highlighted in the agreement or in the plan of action and what are those three points first is cooperate on maritime domain awareness including inviting uk to join india's information fusion center in gurgaon so basically this india's infusion uh, information fusion center aims to in enhance india's surveillance in the maritime domain and if both of these countries collaborate for the maritime domain awareness both of these countries basically will be sharing information with e each other related to marine resources related to marine mobilization so that is one point of contention that is one point of concern between both of these countries that they are aiming to collaborate on the next point is that both of them are planning to sign a logistic memorandum of understanding now if this mou is signed both of these countries will try to address challenges in logistics that they both share and the last point is that they jointly develop india's indigenous light combat aircraft mark 2 so this can be a probable question for you in your examination so from for which aircraft or for which uh, of the foreign technology defense technology has india and uk collaborated or are planning to collaborate through the road map 2030 so this can be your probable question do remember it is light combat aircraft mark 2 so here let's say goodbye to, to this uncle and move on to the next question with which of the following entity has telecom equipment manufacturers association of india signed an mou to cooperate on a series of mutually beneficial matters so out of these five options the right answer is option c that is indo canada chamber of commerce the mutually beneficial matters are related to the 6g technologies cyber security and uh, having the railway telecom technologies among other issues so basically both of these organizations or entities we can say will be collaborating on such kind of issues now apart from this the most important part here is that this indo canada chamber of commerce is going to organize a 10 day virtual trade event in india and the name of that event is con next so this con next 2021 will be the 10 days uh, virtual trade event that is going to be organized by indo canada chamber of commerce and for organizing this virtual trade event this ieccc has taken telecom equipment manufacturers 
Association of India as a partner organization. So this is again an important fact that you have to remember. Now this context is going to take place in the month of June. So that was the side information that I wanted to give. My question from you is that who is the chairperson of Telecom Equipment Association, Manufacturers Association of India? So this is your question for the day that you have to answer in the comment section below. Now, as far as this news is concerned, I hope everything is clear to you. But in case if you have any doubts, then as I always say that you are free to ask us in the comment section as well as on the Telegram. Next question is, which country hosted the European Council meeting 2021? So basically this meeting took place last week only on Saturday. And the point, uh, the highlight of this meeting is that Prime Minister Narendra Modi was invited for the inv was invited in this meeting and he attended this meeting through video conference so basically this european council meeting was for the members of european union and it was such an honor for india that the prime minister of india was invited to this meeting which discussed issues like your covid pandemic as well as uh, other issues related to technology and development now coming back to this question which country hosted this meeting this meeting was hosted by Portugal. Option E is the right answer. Now, Portugal is the current chairperson of European Council. So, that is something that you should remember. Apart from this, how many members are there in European Union? 27 members, guys, after the departure of United Kingdom. So, this is something that you should remember. Now, moving on to the next question. Which bank has been selected as a digital payment partner by the National Agriculture Market? This is a very important question, guys, because this is related to the scheme. It can be asked in your ESI part also. So do listen to me very carefully. You have Kotak Mahindra Bank, Bank of Baroda, Canada Bank, Punjab National Bank, Indian Overseas Bank. Out of these five options, the right answer here is option A, Kotak Mahindra Bank. Now, what does this mean by becoming the digital payments partner of NAM? The basic purpose here is that from now onwards, all the payment related transactions, uh, basically digital transactions will be handled by Kotak Mahindra Bank. Now, you should also remember this thing. This national agricultural market is nothing but an electronic platform for facilitating trade of agricultural produce. So all the digital payments will now be handled by Kotak Mahindra Bank of this national agriculture market. Now, when was this or this NAM initiative launched? This was launched in the year 2016. Now, guys, I am restricting myself to this much information only related to NAM, but I expect you to cover NAM through and through for your upcoming examination. Do not forget that such kind of initiatives, particularly the initiatives that are in news, are very common to be asked in the examination. So do not ignore it. This is your homework, you can say, to completely uh, cover this national agricultural market. Here, this video ends. I hope that you have understood all the things that I have taught you, and thank you so much for watching the video.